Hey everyone, what is up? This is Tori from season 42 of Survivor. I'm also Tori the Therapist and my mission here on my YouTube channel is to make therapy practical, relatable, and cool. So what I'm gonna do is one of my favorite things, which it is to combine therapy and psychology with my love of reality television. So for today's video, I'm going to do something that is going to be probably very therapeutic for me and probably really interesting for you to watch. So this bag right here, this bag is very special to me. So this bag has all of my stuff from Survivor. I have not touched this bag or looked inside since I got back over a year ago. So June 10th, 2021 is when I got back to America from Fiji, from my crazy Survivor experience. I ended up spending 17 days on the island. I spent six days at Ponderosa and this bag houses all of my memories. So here's where therapy and psychology comes in because when I got back from Survivor, most people, they went through all of their things. They sorted it out. They put stuff where it needed to go. They washed their clothes. But for me, I didn't have anywhere in my life for Survivor to fit. So I'm saying that in like a physical sense of, I didn't know where am I supposed to put this stuff from Survivor? Do I just hang up my island clothes with my normal clothes? Like, do I create a shelf, like a shrine for my Survivor experience? I came back home to Oklahoma in June of last year, June 10th, 2021 to be exact. And I immediately, I went back to school to finish my master's degree. I was finishing my internship. Not to mention I was planning a wedding in less than five months. I was going to get married October 16th of 2021. And I had not done anything other than secure a venue. Like I hadn't even picked out my wedding dress yet. So my survivor experience and those memories, I couldn't assimilate that into my life back home because I had so many things going on. I had to come back to America from this wild ride and get right back into my normal life. So this symbolism is so metaphorical and symbolic for what my experience was like when I came back to America. If I just had to kind of put my survivor experience and those memories off to the side, but this represents the very limited physical evidence of my survivor experience. And we're gonna jump into it today. <gasps> I'm so excited. Without further ado, let's jump into this bag and get started. Okay, so first up, I see it, the red. This is my journal. So I'll bring it up a little closer. This journal houses my journal entries from when I was in quarantine. It has some different like puzzles and game tips I was using to prepare. I read about game theory, applying game theory to Survivor, observation of my fellow castaways. This is where I journaled about my jury experience at Ponderosa. That was interesting. I had a whole routine for quarantine so that I didn't go crazy those 14 days. I wrote it out, did the same thing every day. Um, this is where I was trying to figure out if they really were going to shorten Survivor from 39 days to, I think my, my thought was they were going to change it to 29 days. It ended up being 26 days, but I was writing out like how often we'd go to tribal, how often we'd have challenges. I'd written down my T game theory here. So those who don't know, uh, T stands for Tori the Therapist, G is Girl Gang, A is Ally Alarm, N stands for Misfit Lip Militia, and E stands for Extrapolate and Exploit. That was my strategy going into Survivor. This video would be way too long if I read from the journal, so I'm just gonna leave you with a little teaser for that for now. Okay, I see. Uh, okay, I'm hoping there's no bugs in here in blood. Okay, so these are my med, ba med bags. So it stands for medical bags. Uh, I can already tell this is my in-game one. I don't know if you can tell, but like there's still sand in it. Um, <laughs> let's look at what's in here. So in this med bag, uh, uh, that's disgusting. My, I wear a mouth guard at night because I grind my teeth really bad. So I, I had to bring it on the island. So there actually was a scene that made it on the show when you could see like, it looked like there was a bunch of stuff in my mouth at night. It's because I had my retainers and my mouth guard. I do still wear the same retainers now that I did on the island. It's really gross, but whatever. So there's a lot of tampons on here. I know a lot of people have questions like if you're on your cycle, if you're menstruating, what do you do? Don't worry, they allow you to have feminine product, whether it's tampons, pads, so you're taken care of. Yeah, okay, that's literally gross. Uh, and this was just my second med bag. <gasps> What's next? My mini black and white polka dot bag. How cute. Okay. Oh, 
Oh, I see, I see, I see. Oh my gosh. Ah! Oh, this. So these are the letters I got from my family. So no one got the letters on the island, but we did all receive them when we were at Ponderosa. This is like the classic, you know, survivor look. So I, I have a really big family, so I had a lot of letters. Um, a fun fact, it's probably this blue one right here. Yeah, this one's from my mom. And I had found out that my little sister, she was pregnant. I found out like right before I left that she was pregnant. And I told them, I was like, if we get like letters from our family or a video or something, I want you to tell me the gender of the baby because I wasn't gonna be able to find it out. And I knew she was gonna have her ultrasound while I was on the island. And so my mom ended up telling me that the blue paper she chose to write on was her giving the clue that it was gonna be a boy. Funny story too, I was going through all of these letters from my parents, my grandma, my siblings, and I was waiting for the letter from my fiance because I got engaged just a couple of weeks before I flew out to Fiji to film Survivor. And there was no letter from my fiance. So my mind goes to, oh my goodness, he doesn't wanna be with me anymore. Like something happened while I was away because let's be honest, we had dated three times before we finally dated and ended up getting married, like I'm married now. And so I was like, oh, this is history repeating itself. And I didn't get my phone. So when I received these on like day one that I was at Ponderosa, I had to go a whole week thinking that my fiance broke up with me. And he was the first call I had when I got back to America and I finally got my phone back. And I called him and I was crying and I was like, did you change your mind? Yeah, that was pretty traumatic in itself, but we're good, we're happily married. He just apparently didn't get contacted to send a letter. Yeah, very special. So what I think this is, was my bag from quarantine. So Survivor Production, they gave us all some different like activities and fun things to do while we're in quarantine. So like the ultimate brain health puzzle book. I am now obsessed with crossword puzzles because of quarantine. I had never done crossword puzzles before, but you didn't have anything else to do. We couldn't have our phones or anything that had Bluetooth or Wi-Fi capabilities. So I did a lot of crossword puzzles. Oh my goodness, some of my books my science fiction books because I wanted to read these um, when I was like in front of the other players before we were able to meet because I wanted them to be like, oh, she must be some type of nerdy girl because she reads science fiction. I'm so extra. More crossword puzzles, more brain games. Puzzles. Oh, it looks like I, oh my God. My Harry Potter glasses that I use for disguise because I wanted people to think I was nerdy. I didn't want them to see me. I'm brown now. I didn't want them to see me as like this blonde girl who's like stuck up or mean. That's where these are part of my disguise. Um, I wore it at the airport and during the quarantine phase when we saw each other. Here's a charger for my iPods because I was able to bring super old iPods that couldn't connect to Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Oh my, this was my speaker. This little tiny thing was a speaker that I listened to music to. I only had five songs. They were all worship songs as well, but I literally only had five songs. I'm gonna try to remember and put them in this video. But those, they got me through, they got me through. I'm gonna see a victory. Here are the iPods, I found them. Super old. So this, let's see, it's Fiji gold beer. So on the last night of quarantine, the production let us choose. We could either have beer or a glass of wine. It turns out people who chose wine got an entire bottle of wine to themselves, whereas people who chose beer just got one bottle of beer. This was like the Fiji brand of beer. So I, I kept this because it was beautiful. It was the last day of quarantine. I was on my balcony watching the Fijian sunset, drinking this. I do remember too, I saw a cross and I saw Chanel, I didn't know her name at the time, but if Chanel, we just did this awkward like cheers to each other, which is so funny now because I adore her. So I have a bunch of like luggage tags here because they would tag all of our things and we would go by our initials. So mine was TM, Tori Meehan. I'm now Tori Stanley because I got married. Um, I'm still officially actually Tori Meehan. I've not changed my name. <gasps> I have my plane tickets. I'm telling you, I kept everything because I, I didn't go through this so I couldn't throw anything away yet. I have my plane ticket from this is from Dallas to LA. 
Oh, Tulsa to Dallas, Dallas to LA. So these would have been when I was going to Survivor because we stayed in LA for a couple of days before flying out. This looks like... Oh, these were our instructions for when we were in quarantine in Fiji. We quarantined at a very nice resort in Fiji. I mean, we had to stay in our rooms the whole time. We did get a little balcony each, so I would lay out in the sun for like an hour a day. Um, it, it, it was beautiful, beautiful. This is disgusting. I have peanut butter. This is peanut butter from Ponderosa. I don't know why I have it. Not molded, even stranger. I have the bottle cap from the Fiji Gold Beer. You see it? Okay, that's all the interesting things in here. To the next one. I see what's in here and I am saving the best for last because I'm not, I'm not ready to open that, that yet. Oh, that might be the last thing in here. Oh gosh, it is. I almost threw up. I'm not even just being dramatic. Someone did warn me that there could be mold on my clothes. It's my clothes. Spoiler alert. This is my backpack. So my blue Ika backpack. I'm gently smelling. I need to grab a paper towel. I'm not touching this with my bare hands. I'll be right back. If there's bugs in here, I'm gonna die. My blue eco backpack. What's in it? Is there stuff inside? Uh, oh gosh, it smells so bad. I think there is stuff inside. What could possibly be inside? I'm really scared to open this. I'm not kidding. I have not seen these things since the end. I'm gonna smell it. Oh my God. It smells like, like sour. Ooh. There's literally Fijian sand on it. That's so beautiful. Did you see that just stick to the shorts? My socks still folded. I always made sure to have a dry pair of socks. I got two pairs. Ah! Someone just following me. Ah! It's okay, just a piece of leaf. <laughs> oh, my shorts. These were cute. These are actually my little sisters and I never asked her if I could bring them. There's like literally sand. Oh. oh my gosh. My other pair of socks. Ew! I'm gonna smell them though. Not that bad. Getting out my next. <sighs> These look like shoes. I can't. Oh. My body just got hot. Okay. These are my shoes I wore every day for jury. I literally only had one shoe. Well, I am not taking these out of the bag, but these are my challenge shoes, my blue. I got, they're called salmons, I think. They're like water and land shoes. So they dried pretty well. Oh, my Birkenstocks. Oh. Um, yeah, that's bright blue mold. I hope you can't see it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put this stuff in the garage. LOL, I put this in a bag. I'm not opening this. I will get you a picture. This is my water bottle. I drank like seven to eight of these a day because I knew dehydration was gonna hit me a lot quicker than starvation. 
So I would just keep building up and building up and filling up. Guess what though? There's this rumor going around that, oh, Tori doesn't actually drink all that water. She just dumps out her water so that she can go fill it up and look for an idol. I'm like, no, I'm just thirsty and smart. Anyhow, to the next one. Okay, last bag. So people, you might be wondering too, like why didn't you wash your clothes? Cause some people, we got to Ponderosa, as soon as you got there and we voted off, you could have them wash your clothes, like your game clothes. But I was just like, no, because this is some of the only physical evidence that I get to bring home. Like everything else is probably gonna be edited or altered, or it's just gonna be cut out of the actual show. So I wanted to keep my clothes in their original state so that I could have something to like take back with me. That was physical evidence of what I went through. So I remember when I left Ponderosa, my clothes smelled solely of firewood. So it's not really like they smelled like yo or nasty or mildewy. It was like firewood. That's all I could smell. Not firewood, just fire. So I'm gonna take a small whiff. Okay. I'm gonna take a small whiff to see if it smells like firewood or just fire. It does not smell like fire. Mm. Oh gosh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, oh, sorry. My bra. Underwear, ew. Underwear. That's disgusting. Oh shoot, there's mold. I gotta stop. Stay tuned because it gets interesting.